Hey guys, welcome back. In the previous video, we created CRUD for pages. In this video, we're going to add hierarchy. So pages can have sub pages and that will enable our client to better structure their menu. Also, we're going to implement a user friendly user interface to order pages. So our client can simply drag them around. Now there's more than one way to skin a cat and the same goes for adding hierarchy to items in a database. There's two models that are frequently used. Now the first one is called the adjacency model. In this model, our page has an extra column called parent ID and that column takes the ID of the parent page or zero if it has no parent page. So if we want page one to have a child, we'll create that page and set its parent ID to one. Now this model is great if you have a tree just two levels deep or something. You can fetch all the records from the database with just a single query. But it starts to present problems when you have trees consisting of three or more layers. Then you need a whole bunch of queries just to get all the pages out of the database. And that's not good for performance. Now the second model is called the nested sets model or modified pre-ordered tree traversal model. Now to be honest, that's the model that I prefer. Here, the order is set by a left and right number. Numbering the pages starts at the left value for root. The child page in this example gets a left value of two. There's no more children for that page, so the right value for this page gets the next number, which is three. And so we walk along the entire tree, each time increasing the number and adding it to the left or right value of a page. Now this creates an order and a grouping of the pages. When with just two queries, you can get all of the pages out of the database, grouped and ordered and what have you. And it doesn't matter if there's thousands of pages and if they're 20 levels deep, two queries and that's all. But saving and updating records in nested sets can be a pain and frankly, that's an entire course in itself. Two levels of pages is good enough for this CMS. So we'll stick with the adjacency model for now. Let's go to phpMyAdmin and check our page table. Now we already have an order field, but we're still missing parent ID. So let's create a migration for that. Now this will be number four and we'll call it parent ID to pages. Now I'll just use a snippet to set the skeleton migration. We'll need a field called parent ID and it will be an unsigned integer with a default value of zero. And then we'll add that column using dbForge. In the down method, let's just drop that column. Now, open up the migrations config file and set the migration version to 4. Next, we'll run the migration controller we created earlier. Just check in phpMyAdmin and yes, there's our new column. So, how to implement this parent ID? Well, the first thing to do is add a drop down to the edit form, I think. So let's open up the edit view because that's where our form lives. We'll add a new row to the table and it will have a form drop down field with the name of parent ID. Now the second parameter should hold an array with all the available options. Let's make that an array of pages without parents and we'll make sure to pass that array to the view in just a moment. Then for the value, let's check if we have a post value for parent ID. If we do, and that will be our value. Otherwise, we'll just use the current parent ID value for this page. Now let's just go over that one more time. We have a form drop down here with, oh, that's not the proper name, parent ID, has an array of pages, no parents, and that all looks good to me. So now we have two things left to do. First, we need to open up the model and add the parent ID to the rules. We'll just invalid, so it will become an integer. Also, we'll add it to the getNew method with a default value of zero. Remember, we need an array of all pages with our children. Well, let's stay inside of the page model and create a method that will give us just that. We we'll call it getNoParents and it will fetch pages without parents and then it will return a key value pair array for use in a drop down field. First, we just select ID and title. And then we'll set a where statement because we only want pages with a parent ID of zero. And then we'll fetch the pages and we'll store them. Next, we'll set up an array with a default value, which is no parent, so equal to zero. Then if we have pages, we'll loop through them. 
Now for each page we'll add it to the array with the ID as the key and the title as the value. OK, now let's just open up the controller and make sure we fetch pages with our parents using the method we just created. And let's just see what that returns. We'll use our dump function for that. Now that looks good. Our client is even able to link this page to itself. And also the drop-down menu looks good. So back in our controller, it's time to remove our dump. And then we'll just add parent ID to the parameters for array from post. So it will actually be stored as well. Let's just save this all and see if it works. We'll just add a new sub page for about. We'll call it contact with a slug of contact. Let's add in some content and save it. Open it up. And yes, that has the about page as a parent. Now I would like to show the parent slug for every page here as well. What to do? Well, to do so we need to fetch the parent with every page. So, let's create a new method in our page model that will give us just that. We'll call it get with parent. It will take the same parameters as the get method. And it will return the results from the parent method. But, what we'll do is we'll turn it into a join query. And here's the catch. We'll join the pages table with itself and give the join table an alias of P. And then we'll join on the parent ID. So this will give us all pages and the data for their parent pages. Now we don't need all fields so let's add a select statement here as well. We want all records for the page we are fetching. And for the parent page we want to have the title and the slug. Now let's turn to our controller. We'll change the get method to get with parent, you know, the method we just created. And now we have access to the parent slug. So open up the page index view that holds the page listing. We'll just add an extra column here and we'll call it parent. And we'll add a parent slug in the pages loop. Let's review this. Yep, that seems to work just fine. Now we'll also need to override the delete method in the page model. Inside of the page model create a delete method and it will be run instead of the method in my model. Now why do we need to do this? Well, think about it. If we delete a page now and that page has children, we are left with poor little orphan pages. That's not a good idea. So guys, what we need to do instead is delete a page and then reset the parent ID for all of its children. First we'll delete a page. Now that's pretty straightforward. Deleting a page is simply a matter of calling the parents page method and passing in the ID. And then let's just do an action record update. We'll set the parent ID to zero where the parent is equal to the current ID. And then we'll update the current table which is the page table. So let's check that in a browser. We have a contact page which is a child of the about page. Now if we delete the about page, it should delete the about page, but it should also set the parent ID for contact to zero. So let's delete this about page. And let's just go into phpMyAdmin and check to see if the parent ID for contact has been set to zero. And yes it has, so we're all good here. And that's all for nesting pages. In the next video we'll add an Ajax GUI so our client can order pages simply by dragging them around. They'll also be able to drag them as a child for other pages. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. I'll see you then.